the play of your new transfer, Julius Brents at, at quarterback? I think he's been outstanding. I think in, in, the, in the transfer market, I think we went four for four, you know, uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the leadership characteristics and certainly the on the field play that we got, uh, that we're getting out of those four guys. And uh, Julius is, is um, somebody that established himself right away as a, as a dominant athlete, an alpha male type athlete. Um, he's learned what we're doing. He's transitioned really well into what we're doing. Uh, he's made plays. You know, he's not a guy that just does it right, but can't make the play and finish when he gets the opportunity to. He's, uh, he's going to be a good one. I mean, he's going to be somebody that people will know. By the end of last season, your secondary was, was kind of in shambles because of one reason or another, whether it be COVID or injuries. How do you feel like you've replenished that group? Um, well, obviously, we addressed a couple of needs with transfers, and um, we're still in shambles a little bit. We've had a number of guys that are out with offseason surgeries and, and whatnot, but I think uh, getting T.J. Smith back into the mix will help us. Um, he's a guy that was just starting to come on before his injury, and then, um, you know, the, the transfer market has helped us, and then just guys maturing in what we do and maturing with their bodies. I mean, there were a couple of guys that we had that were good players. They just weren't physically ready to go. You know, uh, a couple of examples are, are, are T. Denson and Echo Boydo. You know, they're, they're good players. They're solid uh, athletes and all that stuff. They just, you know, they were 168 pounds or whatever. And it's just to, to play in the big 12 with that, you're going to struggle when you're going up against a, a six, five receiver that's 230 and can run just as fast as you. So, um, you know, we're addressing some of that with strength conditioning. We address some of that with the transfer uh, market. And guys are starting to get more confident in who they are and what they can do. And then lastly, at, at linebacker, you, you lost a lot of snaps and a lot of experience there with J Justin Hughes and Elijah Sullivan. How comfortable are you with, with the pieces that you have in place right now? Honestly, if I had to say right now, I'd say our linebacker room is probably our deepest room. Um, you know, we've had some guys that have really come on there. Uh, obviously, Deuce Green. And, and Cody Fletcher are guys that have played a number of snaps for us. But, um, you know, we made the move <clears throat> in the middle of last season uh, to put Ryan Hennington at linebacker. And it was a work in progress with him because he had never played defense before, let alone linebacker. I mean, we moved him from safety. Um, he's had a tremendous spring. We moved Wayne Jones to a spot where I think he's a little bit more comfortable in the things that he's doing. So he's down there working at that spot. Uh, Austin Moore is a kid that's come on. Nick Allen's a kid that's been in the program that's come on. Keenan Gaskin. I mean, I can name a lot of guys. We've got a lot of good competition in that room. So uh, I, I feel very comfortable with the athleticism that we have in that group, the toughness that we have in that group. I think that's, uh, that's a group where we're going to be uh, – we're going to have some depth. Thanks, Coach. Kellis. Hey, Joe, uh, given that it is spring ball, have you experimented at all with any new formations, maybe some three down looks or anything like that this month? Um, you know, our, our focus this spring has really been, and, and, and rightfully so, I don't know how we got away from it uh, as much as we did, but our focus has just been on the fundamentals and just getting better at what we do. Our focus has been on um, defeating blocks, uh, tackling, tracking, tackling, and, and playing with great effort. And those are things that are staples in whatever you do. Um, you know, we've, we've tried to get ourselves in the best structure possible, uh, but we haven't gone crazy with anything this spring um, that's, uh, that's insanely different than what, what we've seen just because we want to we wanna get better at the things that we do. And, and I think last year we fell into the trap a little bit of we're going to scheme this and that, and we're going to, you know, Scheme, 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 and then best laid plans always fall apart when you lose uh, two guys on a Friday or, you know, uh, you get uh, yourself put in a position where uh, the, the lineup that you have out there just can't physically do some of the things that you're asking them to do. And um, so we've, we've uh, I guess, uh, experimented with a couple of things, but uh, by and large, we're, we're doing what we do and we're just trying to do it better. Uh, you mentioned T.J. Smith a minute ago. Where is he at in his recovery, and, and what position do you see him best fitting in at with the defense? He's, he's just been cleared to be a, um, a full-go individual, non-contact kind of a guy. So he hasn't taken any uh, team reps right now, but he's moving around really well. Um, change of direction. He has no pain. He has no, um, you know, after practice, he's not a, a, a guy that's sore for two days. 
Uh, I think he's been conditioning really hard with Coach True during the uh, during the practices. So he's he's going to be uh, ready to go in the summer, full go by the time we get going uh, back again after finals. Um, you know, as far as where he fits, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased with uh, with Russ Yeast, a guy that we picked up in the transfer portal. And so in some way, shape or form, we'd like to get those three guys on the field, uh, Russ, TJ and Jerron McPherson at the same time. OK, and um, can you tell me just a little bit more about Wayne Jones, why you thought his uh, skills translated better at linebacker as opposed to where he was previously at safety? You know, one of the things that Wayne struggled with as a line, as a, as a safety, I'm sorry, was, was tackling in space. That was never his deal. You know, we, we moved him into a, a spot a lot of times at safety where he would move into the box and be part of the box fit. And we always felt like he had a really good feel for that, uh, really good footwork, was able to keep himself square, was able to make tackles in close quarters and be physical and get off blocks and be slippery in there. Um, but when we backed him up off the ball, there was times when he, when he struggled to, to make some of those plays. And, um, you know, he, he was a guy that I think was trying to keep his weight at a certain, I think his body wanted to do one thing and he wanted to do another in order to keep himself as a safety. Uh, we just kind of let him go and he's put on 15 pounds of pretty good weight here so far in the off season. And uh, I think he is, he has uh, got a real good natural feel for what he's doing in there. And so the, the idea originally was just to get him closer to the ball and just get him uh, around the action a little bit more. He's a phenomenal communicator. He does a good job getting things orchestrated and aligned in there. Uh, is able to control the defensive line with some of his communication. So it's been a good move for him. He's had a good spring. All right. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Adam. Coach, you lost um, All-American Wyatt Hooper and then the two linebackers in Houston Sullivan. There were many team captains that graduated or left. How, from your perspective and what you've seen, how has the defense kind of adjusted to losing that caliber? This is the best um, <clears throat> buy-in that we've had since we've been here as a staff uh, on the defensive side of the ball, for sure. Uh, this is the most together that this group has been since we've been here. Um, you know, we lost some great players um, and we're replacing them by committee, honestly. I mean, uh, yeah, it'd be great to have a Wyatt Hubert, it'd be great to have, you know, some of those guys that could make some of those splash plays, but I, I feel like we're playing better as a unit right now than we ever have. And part of it's the practices that we're getting right now. There's no question about that, but I, I think that, um, you know, that's what we're going to be moving forward. We're a developmental program. We lose one. Somebody's got to replace that one. And you say, yeah, we've lost Wyatt Hubert and we can't replace him right now. But I'm telling you, Felix Andy having a phenomenal spring. He's a guy that's going to play a ton of ball for us. A guy, Nate Matlack, that, that didn't play at all for us last year is going to have a role in what we do. Uh, Spencer Trussell, a guy that had a minor role in what we did last year at defensive end is going to have a major role, you know, uh, Khalid Duke's getting better. Bronson Massey's getting better. I mean, we're, we're, we're improving across the board. So we're going to lose players. That's what it's going to be. Um, but we've got to, you know, that's the mark of a good program is you replace those players with, uh, with new guys. Anything else? Go ahead, Fitz. Hey, Coach, uh, how's that defensive tackle spot looking for you? I think we struck gold in Tim Horn. I'm really pleased with, uh, with him and where he is. Um, he's a physical kid that can move and has length and is big and, and has uh, some football intelligence and has fit right into that room. Uh, I thought at the end of last year that Eli Huggins was playing at a level that was as good as anybody in the league. Um, happy to have him back and he's a lot healthier than he was at the end of last year. I mean, there were some there were some issues that he was having in November of, and December of last year that he just probably wasn't the same player that he was earlier in the year uh, as he battled himself through some things. Jalen Pickles gotten a lot better, um, and he probably had his best practice of the spring uh, yesterday as far as uh, being the most disruptive and being the most um, uh, twitchy, you know, and active as uh, that that we've seen. Um, We've moved some different guys in and out of there from the defensive end room to get ourselves a little bit more athletic. Uh, and another guy that's, that's uh, come on a little bit is, uh, is D Hintz. You know, we're putting him in a position maybe where he can have a little bit more success in what we do. You know, he was kind of thrown into that, um, you know, last fall and hadn't really played in this type of a system before. And 
and really was a fish out of water for most of the, most of the season. We didn't get as much out of him being the explosive athlete that he is as we thought we might have been able to get. And uh, he's had a really good spring, especially these last four or five days. And so um, I think it's a, it's a room that's maybe a little bit deeper than it was last year. Um, you know, obviously, you, you know, you lose a guy like Drew Wiley, you'd love to have him. But I think, uh, again, we've replaced him by committee there. I think we're, we're, we're solid at that spot. Uh, from listening to you, you've got to feel pretty good about your depth across the board. I do. It's, it's just unproven depth. You know, that's, that's the thing. I, I think, I think we can get things done. You know, there's, uh, uh, there's something to be said about game minutes though. And, and I think that's something that when some of these guys get in there, they have the ability to do what we're asking them to do. They just need to go out there and, and do it and, and get confidence in doing it and understand that they can do it against anybody. I mean, we're, we're doing it. Um, you know, a guy like Nate Matlack, for example, has never been in a game before, you know, so it's, it's, uh, I think I know how he'll react. Uh, I think he knows how he'll react, but then you just got to go out there and react and uh, get those first few snaps under your belt, and then you're off and running. Any uh, tweaks to the scheme you're putting out on the field? We're trying to try to minimize that as much as we can uh, so that we can play fast. In fact, one of the things we've done is we've tried to make things a little bit simpler and uh, trying to get away from the scheme aspect of it and just teach you know, the core values of discipline, toughness, commitment, and selflessness, uh, and again, just work on our block destruction, work on our tackling, and continue to play with great effort and intensity to the ball. And that's, uh, that's what our emphasis has been. Yes, we've made some, some adjustments and some tweaks to try to maybe get ourselves in a little bit better structurally, uh, in some better structural situations than we were last year. Um, you know, it was kind of the, um, didn't get an opportunity to do that a bunch last off season. Um, kind of just rolled with what we had. And I think we're, we're in a spot now where we were able to make some of those moves. And, um, you know, uh, we're excited about it. We're, we're happy about the direction it's going. Okay, Mr. Defense, how's the offense looking for this team? Uh, well, from my perspective, they're taking a lot of tackles for loss and sacks and throwing a lot of interceptions. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I think uh, <clears throat> across the board there, too, I mean, we're, we're just getting better. I mean, we're getting better on the O-line which was something that we needed. You know, it's something to deal with Duke's Fawn every day. That's a, that's a tough situation. Um, you know, uh, Skyler and, and, and Will Howard have, are, have gotten a lot better. It's just uh, uh, there's just more competition across the board. And I think everybody that's, that's seeing this daily, um, it, it's plainly obvious. And so, um, you know, we'll see what the product looks like in the fall. Thanks, Coach. Kels? Uh, you mentioned him earlier, but Jerron McPherson, how big of a deal was that when he decided he was going to come back? Great. Uh, from a leadership standpoint, first and foremost, um, you know, there's a guy that attacks his business. And I'll tell you, you know, every year that we've been here, he seems to have gotten more and more mature, you know, from that first year where, I don't know, he, he was just a guy uh, that went about his business to last year. He was so much more intentional with the things he did in, in terms of taking care of his body, in terms of film study, in terms of what he needed to do to get himself to a position where he could succeed to this year, even taking it to another level. I don't know if there's a guy on the roster that does more extra work than he does. You know, I don't know if there's a guy on the roster that um, goes out of his way as much to spend time with young guys as he does. And so um, if nothing else, and obviously we know he's a, a great player that'll help us, but if nothing else, he's, he's providing a great example for what we want those guys to look like in the future. And one more for you. I know it couldn't have been easy, but what was it like being defensive coordinator those last couple of games when you were so restricted with personnel and everything that you could do? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was on uh, COVID protocol those last few ones. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was tough. And, and, you know, when you, when you throw in, you know, the injury situations on top of just some of the guys that we were missing, um, it, it was what it was. And, uh, um, you know, I, I think that, <clears throat> you know, we're using that kind of as, we don't talk about that a whole lot, but we're using, that's in the back of everybody's mind of that's not us. That's not our identity. You know, we got away from, again, the things that we want to be about, which are uh, toughness, physicality, running to the football, being great communicators, um, you know, we had signs of that early in the season. And, and if you were to watch our last, you know, couple of games, you wouldn't have seen that. And, and we, can, we can say it's for this reason or that, 
but that's not what K-State defense is going to be. All right, thanks, Joe. Derek? Yeah, Coach, I don't know if you've answered this yet, and I guess it's just not clear to me, so I was wondering, who are you, you got taking reps at the nickel position right now? Because I know you lost you know, a few of your nickels so far. Yeah, we're, we're actually uh, using Wayne Jones in that role a little bit. Um, uh, he, he, him and Ryan Hennington have had to kind of had some yeoman's duty of, of playing an in-the-box linebacker position, and then we're using him out there as a nickel sometimes. And it doesn't hurt them uh, to go out there and, and play some man and do some different things. It doesn't hurt them to understand a couple of different positions. But right now in the, in the secondary, we're just not in a position where Matt Mashmeyer is taking some spots in there. Uh, but in the secondary, we're, we're really thin. Like I mentioned, with some of the surgeries and things that we have, we're, we're, not, uh, uh, we're not fully whole at that position right now. And finally, and it kind of stems from that, and, and maybe you can't answer this yet, but do you foresee you guys maybe adding still another player for the secondary before the season begins? It's very possible. Yeah, it's very possible. Um, we're, we're, uh, um, we're always on the look, you know, and, and uh, yeah, we, we, we do. And, and I think in order to do that, though, it's got to be the right guy. And, and I think that's where we hit, as I mentioned before, I think we hit a home run with the four guys that we brought in because not only are they great, fits on the field, but they're great fits off the field. They're guys in the locker room that we love. I mean, they're guys that have come in here and fit in. They're guys that are buying into the virtues that make you a K-State football player and um, to a man. And, uh, you know, any one of those guys ha has the year and the respect of everybody that's been here for years. And so uh, we're looking for a guy like that. And um, so if there's a guy like that out there, yeah, we'll give him a look. Thanks, Coach.